All right, let's go up to Boston Fenway Park. And Bob and FP are joining us now. And you heard what Ray just said there about the miscommunication in the outfield. And FP, you played, and you know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, I do. I mean, you have to communicate. But on the road, you use hand signals. Because I can yell, I got it, I got it, I got it, Carp, as mm -hmm. loud as I can. And you could be right here, and you're not going to hear it. So what you do as an off outfielder is you look. I put my hand up, and you look. And if you see the center fielder with his hand in the air, that's basically a nonverbal signal that yeah. I got it. And we didn't see any hand signals today. And we didn't even see them mouthing I got it. So, yeah, yeah there was no communication at all. And, uh, you know, Michael Taylor's young in center field. But, hey, you're in the big leagues. you got to take charge out, here, out there. The odd thing about this whole thing, FP, you look at the final totals in the day. The Red Sox, two errors, the Nats, one. But there were four or five big-time problems out there. And they're misplays. And, and this is the highest level, and these plays have to be made. And, and quite frankly, that second inning was embarrassing. I know the guys in gray uniforms were embarrassed. And I talked about it during the show, and Ray could probably talk about it after. We, when you see an error next to you as a player, all of a sudden now you have a negative thought in your head. And mm -hmm. you're like, making an error is horrible. I mean, it's the worst thing you could do as a big leaguer, especially on the road. And now you see that error, and you say, boy, I don't want to do that. And then you see another guy do it, and you say, boy, that really looked bad. Next thing you know, the ball's hit to you, and then you do it, too. That's how the whole thing snowballs. And however they're going to find a way to change this, they have to. I mean, they're not going to play like this all year. They just can't. They're better than this. Yeah, and we know they will be. Uh, worth back today. Maybe Jason DH is tomorrow. We'll see. Good news on Rendon, as Dan reported, a couple of weeks away. And Denard Span probably quicker than that. The one thing that I can take out of this game from a positive standpoint today is at least the bullpen. I mean, your starter gets seven outs, and then you've got to get 20 more, or in this case, 17 more the rest of the game because the Sox didn't bat in the bottom of the ninth. So Tanner Roark, Aaron Barrett, and to a certain extent Xavier Cedeno, who was all over the place, did get those outs and those innings. And Blake Trinan didn't have to pitch today. Drew Storen's fine. Matt Thornton is still out there. So the bullpen, fairly good shape for the rest of the series. Craig Stammen didn't have to work today either. Yeah, that is a positive, but I think one of the storylines that might go under the radar today is, is Jordan Zimmerman. His command was off for the second straight start. His velocity's down. He was 90, 91, and occasional 92, 93. But when he's effective, he's 94, 95 with that late hop that I always talk about. He didn't have that today, and he definitely didn't have command. How many times do you see Jordan Zimmerman hit guys back to back? Yeah, just doesn't happen. Well, guys, we don't want to live in the past, but three years ago in this ballpark, Strasburg won, Geo won, and uh, maybe that'll happen again tomorrow night and Wednesday. And, uh, you know, we're not trying to vandalize Fenway Park or anything. But this is but a scorecard. But I have a feeling today's scorecard is, is going away. <laughs> this is my scorecard from today's game, and today's over. Johnny and Ray, in a very dramatic way, he's turning the page for tomorrow. <laughs>